Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and on this channel we do art stuff. So today, um, I'm starting to feel better now after my um, <laughs> post Christmas art haul video where I had basically lost my hearing. It is now pretty much back to normal. It's still a little bit fuzzy, but it's um, pretty much back to normal now, which is great. Um, I thought today we could start off with something easy and do a uh, dot card swatching video. So this is uh, the 104 color dot card chart from Shinhan, their PWC line, which is their artist grade line of watercolors. Um, and I thought we could go through and swatch these today. Human information is on the chart, which is good. So I can talk to you about the pigments as we go through. And uh, and yeah, so I'm just going to get myself all we set up, zoom you guys in so you can see a bit clearer what's going on, and we will get to some swatching. Do my best. I'm trying to film this with natural light, but if needed, I will turn the lamp on. Um, okay, so we're starting at the top here with Crimson Lake. This is pigment PR83. This is the original pigment for Elizabeth Crimson and it is considered to be not light fast so not necessarily one i would recommend if you're planning on displaying your work or um, selling your work so a good one for like sketchbook or practice i mean it's a really beautiful color so that's crimson lake it's transparent staining um and it's got two stars light fast and so i'm trying to see what the scale is here so it's a one, two, three light fastness scale. And so this one's ranked as two according to Shinhan. And they have, sorry, I'm sorry. Yes, the ST is staining. So it's staining PR83. Then next up, they have Alizarin Crimson. And this one is pigment PR23, which is interesting. It's not a pigment I've seen or heard of in professional watercolors before or at least not like traditional western watercolors so Shinhan is a Korean watercolor brand I believe but that's also really pretty it's three star light fastness apparently it's transparent and staining then next up we have quinacridone red which is PV19 this is a very pink quinacridone red it's usually a bit more of like a corally color this is also considered three star light fastness, transparent and staining. Next up we have Permanent Rose. This is PV19 again. PV19 can be a variety of different pigments and we'll probably see a couple of other versions of it as well. Um, this is sometimes called Quinacridone Rose in other brands. And this has two stars light fastness staining and semi and transparent okay next up we have carmine so this is another pr83 pigment three this one has three stars light fastness and staining as well as transparent i'm a bit dubious about this three star light fastness for pr83 because from my experience this color fades quite dramatically but it is another beautiful color it's also interesting how this version of PR83 apparently has three stars light fastness and the first one we tried only had two. So there again, a bit dubious about this. <laughs> then next up we have Rose Madder and this is also three stars light fastness, transparent and staining. It's also PR83. So this is the third version of PR83 in this range of colors so far. So it's interesting and they're all slightly different. So this is the reddest one, the warmest one. This is the coolest, most purple leaning and this is kind of in the middle. Not sure how well you can see that on camera. But yeah, definitely an interesting choice. Let me just move this water pot over here. Maybe that'll be better for lighting. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Next up, what's that doing there? Next up we have Pyral Red. This is PR254. 
this transparent three stars light fastness and staining that's a really lovely rich color it's a it's a warm red and if I was to pick a warm red that's probably one I would go for the next up we have permanent red which is PR 209 this is what I should often see as quinacridone red this pigment PR 209 this is more the color I would expect to see um, I know Daniel Smith calls this pigment quinacridone coral because it has that slightly co more corally undertone then we have brown madder this is a mixture of PR83 so again that alizarin crimson pigment and PY83 this is two stars light fastness semi-transparent and staining it's not a bad shade but there again with that PR83 then we have Scarlet Lake this is a combination of PR48 colon 1 and PR9 again two pigments that I don't often see used in professional watercolors uh, two star light fastness and semi transparent then we have opera this is a fluorescent pigment so it is or dye based pig color basically so it's one star light fastness transparent it's apparently granulating and, uh, and yeah so not very light fast but it can be a fun one for creating bright mixtures or for use in work that's meant to be digitally reproduced or scanned then we have cadmium red deep that's PR 108 it is semi opaque three star light fastness and staining all right next up we have vermilion this is PR 108 which is cadmium red and PO 20 PO 20 which is cadmium orange I believe that pigment is so it's a mixture of the two cadmiums it's three star light fasteners granulating and semi-transparent then we have vermilion hue this is PO 16 so pigment orange 16 again one that's not often that I don't often see I think white knights had a version of this pigment but I can't remember now um, three star light fastness transparent and staining then next up we have cadmium red orange that's PO20 that cadmium orange pigment three star light fast it's uh, three star light fasteners granulating and semi semi opaque then we have brilliant orange which is just that PO16 so again another PO version of PO16 it's a different lighter hue than the first version we saw in vermilion hue transparent three star light fastness and staining then we have permanent yellow orange this is two star light fastness transparent and it's made up of pigment PY83 and PO13 Then we have cadmium yellow orange. This is a mixture of PY35, which is a cadmium yellow, and PO20, which is that cadmium orange pigment. It's a nice warm orangey yellow. Here we go. And then we have cadmium yellow deep. This is PY35, so cadmium yellow pigment. So PY35 can be a range of hues from like a deeper more orangey toned yellow to a lemony color and then we have what well, they call cadmium yellow but it's actually made up of PO20 which is a cadmium orange pigment which is interesting I forgot to mention with the cadmium yellow deep it's semi trans semi opaque uh, three star light fastness and staining and this cadmium yellow is the same semi opaque three star light fastness and staining then we have cadmium yellow light this is PY35 so your traditional cadmium yellow pigment 
three star light fasteners, semi opaque and staining. Then we have cadmium yellow pale. Again, PY35, three star light fasteners, semi opaque and staining. Then we have Indian yellow. This is PY183. It's two star light fasteners and transparent. It's a really lovely warm yellow. Then we have permanent yellow deep. This one's made up of PY83. Two star light fasteners again, transparent and staining. Next up we have permanent yellow light. This is PY1, it's two stars light fasteners, transparent and this is again not one I see often in artist grade watercolours. Then we have lemon yellow, two star light fasteners, semi opaque, it's made up of PY81, again this is not a pigment I have come across before very pale. Then we have Naples Yellow. This is a mixture of PY35, so that cadmium yellow colour, and PW6, so that's China, uh, titanium white. It's three star light fasteners and it's opaque. Next up we have Aurelian, or rather this is a hue, it's not the original Aurelian pigment. This is made up of PY42, which is actually a yellow ochre pigment. Uh, it's transparent and three stars light fastness. This is an interesting color. It's not what I would have expected. Then moving into the greens, we first up have greenish yellow. A lot of brands will call this color green gold. It's the pigment PY129 and it has got a two star light fastness, transparent and staining. So interesting. I thought this was a more light fast pigment, but maybe the Shinhan version isn't as light fast. Next up we have Terravert Yellow Shade. And uh, this one is transparent, three star light fastness, and the pigment is PBR7 apparently. Never seen a green PBR7 before, but could just be me. It's really hard to re wet and it's a very low tinting strength colour, so I wouldn't get this expecting it to be like super strong saturated colour because it's not going to be that. Ooh. Right. Next up we have olive green. This is one of my favorites colors in general. So this is a mixture of PY83 and PG. All right, <laughs> camera battery died, but we were just doing olive, olive green, which is a mixture of PY83 and PG8. It is uh, transparent, two star light fastness, and it's a color I really like. So we'll see what that one looks like when it's dry. Then next up we have Cadmium Green Pale. It's a mixture of PG26 and PY35. It is semi-opaque, semi three star light fastness. And it's a really nice sort of lime green kind of color. Then next up we have Cadmium Green Light, which is a mixture of PG7 and PY35. It is semi-opaque and has three stars light fastness. Then we have permanent green number one. This is just PG7 apparently. It's a very yellow PG7 than what I have seen before. Um, it is transparent and only two stars light fastness. So I'm interested what else might be in that mix because PG7 is typically a very light fast pigment being a thalo. Then we have cadmium green middle this is a mixture of PG26 and PY35. So again, same pigments as the Cadmium Green Pale, but it seems like there's more of the green in this one than yellow. 
So this is semi-opaque, three star light fasteners and staining. Then we just have cadmium green. Again, this is a mixture of PG26 and PY35. So same pigments as the one before, but obviously a little bit more of that green than yellow in the mix. Semi-opaque, three star light fasteners and staining. Then we have cadmium green deep. This is a mixture of PG7, Thaler Green and PY35. Semi-opaque, three stars light fastness and staining. The next up we have Sap Green, which is one that I really like. Um, this is PG8. This is not a color or a pigment you often see in um, professional watercolors being used these days. It's not considered very light fast, but I personally have never had any issues with it and I really like the single pigment green. It's um, transparent it's been, and it's been given, given a two star light fastness. Then we have oxide of chromium. This is PG17, very standard for oxide of chromium. This one is particularly hard to re-wet at the moment very stubborn. It's opaque typically and has three stars light fastness but this dot of this pigment it is not reactivating very well so we're left with a very pale approximation of that colour. Then we have P um, Hooker's Green which is another variation of that PG8 pigment. It's a lot more blue leaning than the sap green. <coughs> um, it is two star, light fastness, transparent and staining. Then next up we have green deep. This is a mixture of PY3 PG, and PG7. Sorry. It is semi transparent and has two stars light fastness. Then next up we have Thalo Green Dark. This is actually a colour I really like and I have this one, this tube of this one as well as the sap green. It's a mixture of PG7 and PBR7. So it has, it's a slightly more natural looking version of a Thalo Green pigment. Um, Thalo Green can be really good for mixes but on its own it's not a colour I would choose to use whereas this one I really like it. It's also, I can't remember where I heard this but it's also a good dupe for um, Jadeite Genuine from Daniel Smith, one of the Primatech colours. Um, that's a really good alternative. It gives a similar cube, but it's not granulating. So it's the same sort of colour, just without the level of granulation that the Jadeite has. The next up, we have two colours that I'm slightly confused about why they both are on this list, but we have Viridian and then Viridian Hue. Both are PG7 both have three stars light fastness and are transparent however the one i'm swatching now the one that's viridian is apparently staining whereas the hue apparently is not but they're also in different price brackets which is interesting so professional watercolors typically come in different series and the series are depend the series that the paint each particular color is in is dependent on the pigments being used. So the more exper expensive the series, the higher the price is. So series A is the cheapest and then it goes up B, C, D, E. So this range goes from A to E. So Viridian is in series C, which is PG7, staining, blah, blah, blah. Then the Viridian Hue, which is the exact same pigment, not mixed with anything else, is in series A, which makes zero sense to me. It looks like a slightly different colour. It's the same sort of hue but it looks a little bit paler for some reason. I don't know. I'm very confused by this one. But you can see what I mean by the PG7 being quite garish and bright whereas this Thalo Green Dark is a much more usable colour in my opinion. Then we have another version of Terra Vert, so I'm guessing that was a yellow shade, so I'm guessing this is like the bluer version. Again, really hard to re-wet. This is a mixture of PB28 and PG8. 
um, and it's just really hard to re-wet. It's transparent, three star light plasters, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it unless you want that sort of palish colour. Then we have Shadow Green. Um, this is PBK31. This is typically referred to as Perylene Green in other brands. It's really beautiful dark green. It is semi-transparent, three star light fastness and staining. And then next up we have Peacock Green. This is a mixture of PG7 and PB15 colon 3, so phthalo blue green shade. This is semi transparent, two star light fastness, and staining. Then we have cobalt green, which is an interesting mix of PY53 and PG7. It is opaque. Three star light fastness and staining. And our final row for this first side. We have turquoise blue light. This is a mixture of PB28, which is a cobalt blue. PW18. That's a white pigment I've not heard of. And PG7. It is semi-opaque. Three star light fastness. Then we have turquoise blue. So the first one was turquoise blue light. This is turquoise blue. PG7, PB28, so phthalo green and cobalt blue, and PW6, which is titanium white. Opaque, two star light fastness and granulating. Then we have blue pale. This is PB15, so phthalo blue, mixed with PW6, so it's titanium white. This is also opaque, three star light fastness. Next up we have marine blue. This is PB15 colon 3, so it's a phthalo blue green shade. So this looks a lot more like a phthalo turquoise than a phthalo blue. It is transparent, three star light fastness and staining. Next up we have peacock blue. This is PB15 colon 3 and this is more typical what I would expect for a phthalo blue green shade although I'm, I'm interested to see that this is only two star light fastness but it is transparent and it is staining and then next up we have the Dita blue this is PB28 mixed with PW6 so that's cobalt blue mixed with white not reactivating super well but it could just be there's not a lot of pigment on this particular little dot you can see this this is being really useful for skies it looks really pretty okay all right moving on to the second side we have cerulean blue this is pb35 Cerulean pigments or the traditional original cerulean pigments are actually they're cobalt based so PB35 is a cobalt pigment I believe. It is semi-opaque, three star light fastness and granulating. Then we have cerulean blue hue so this is a PB15 Kona 3 again. Thalo blue green shade so again I'm not entirely sure why we have three versions of this pigment now although one of them is very different. The Peacock Blue and this Cerulean Blue Hue are, hue are very similar. It's two star light fastness and transparent and staining. Next up we have Cobalt Blue PB28. This is semi-transparent, three star light fastness and granulating. That's pretty. Then we have Cobalt Blue Hue which is an interesting choice. It is PB29, which is just straight up ultramarine. Usually it's the cue of cobalt. It will be like an ultramarine mixed with a bit of white. This one's marked as transparent, three star light fastness and staining. 
Then we have Thalo Blue Red Shade. This is PB, oh, and this is PB29. That's interesting. They've used a French ultramarine, sorry, they've used an ultramarine pigment for Thalo Blue Red Shade. That is, that is a choice, that is interesting. And it doesn't look like an ultramarine either. It's very strange. I am confused by some of the pigment choices, I will be honest. <coughs> All right, next up we have Ultramarine Light, which is PB29. This is transparent, three star light fastness and granulating. Next up we have Ultramarine Deep, so it's also PB29. Transparent, three star light fastness and granulating. So you can see this deep one is a bit more on the purple side of things. So it's definitely more red leaning than the light. So it depends what kind of hue you want. Next up we have Prussian Blue, PB27. Transparent, two star light fastness and staining. Next up we have Royal Blue. So this is a mixture of PB15 colon 3, Thalo Blue Green Shade and PB66 which is, I think it is a um, original synthetic indigo pigment that is not very light fast apparently and not used very often. So this is um, semi opaque, 3 star light fastness and, tra and uh, staining. And then we have indigo, which is just PB66, which is that indigo pigment. Um, again, not a lot of companies these days use the traditional indigo pigment because it's not very light fast. And this is semi opaque, two star light fastness and staining. All right, next up we have lavender. This is a mixture of PB28, so cobalt blue, PV15, so that's ultramarine violet, and PW6, titanium white. It is opaque, three star light fastness, and granulating. Then next up we have ultramarine violet, PV15. This is semi opaque, and two star light fastness. Typically this is this would be a granulating colour as well, but it's not marked as being granulating in this case. Then we have permanent violet, which is PV3, two star light fastness, transparent staining. A lot of companies will have replaced PV3 with a more light fast variation of uh, PV23, I think it is, which is diaxazine violet. Then we have mineral violet, which is PV3. 23 apparently but this is a much more red version pv23 normally looks like this and not like this so again very interesting choices this is semi-transparent two star light fastness and granulating this looks very different than what i would expect from a pv23 so that's also interesting next up we have cobalt violet light this is PV14, transparent, three stars, light fastness and granulating. If I can get this to reactivate anything, it's very hard to reactivate, a lot like the Terravert earlier, super low tinting colour and not very reactivating, not reactivating very well at all and it's pilling the paper around it. Okay, next up we have Permanent Magenta. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this. There we go. Permanent Magenta, this is PB19. Semi-transparent, three star light fastness and staining. And then we have Brown Red, PBR25. Transparent, three stars light fastness a nice red brown brown red then we've got light red which is PR 101 it is semi transparent three star light fastness and staining so it's a bit like a burnt sienna type color 
Then we have brown, which is just PR101. Sorry, we're on the raw umber. So this is three star light fasteners, granulating and transparent. Next up we have raw sienna, PR101 again. Three star light fasteners, transparent and granulating. This one's definitely got a nice amount of pigment to it. Next up we have yellow ochre, PY42, semi-opaque, three star light fasteners. There we go. And then we have umber, PBR7, semi-transparent, three star light fastness and granulating, although I can't get a huge amount of pigment off this one. Next up we have Van Dyke Brown. This is NBR8, which is Natural Brown 8, which I think is the original Van Dyke Brown pigment. Again, doesn't reactivate very well. It has two star light fastness and is transparent. Can't say I would really recommend that based on how it reactivates. It's granulating and staining, apparently. Then we have Van Dyke Brown 2 which is a PR101, so I'm guessing this is the more modern variation. Semi-transparent, three star light fastness. And definitely a lot more pigmented than the original, at least when reactivated. Next up we have Sepia, which is PR101, mixed with PBK11. Um, it is granulating, three star light fastness and semi-opaque. And we have Ivory Black, which is PVK9. Pretty standard black. It's a slightly more warm black. Then we have Peach Black, which is, in this case, PVK1. That's an interesting one. I haven't heard of that pigment. But this is a cooler leaning black. It's opaque with three stars light fastness. The previous one was also opaque with three star light fastness. And then we have neutral tint, which is a mixture of PV66, so that indigo pigment, with PVK11, which is a granulating black. It is opaque and two star light fastness and staining. Then we have Payne's Grey, which also has that PV66 pigment in it and PBK31, which is interesting. I've not seen a mix like this for Payne's Grey before. So it has indigo mixed with perylene green. That's an interesting combination. Then we have Davies Grey. It's a mixture of PBK31, so that perylene green, mixed with PG17, which is the chromium green oxide, and PW6, which is titanium white. So this is opaque, three star light fastness, granulating and staining. The Payne's Grey, if I didn't mention, is semi-opaque, two star light fastness and staining. <coughs> Next up we just have Grey. This is a mix of PVK7 mixed with PW6, so a black mixed with titanium white. It is opaque, two star light fastness and yeah. Next up we have Chinese White, PW6. Oh, interesting, Chinese White is usually PW4. I wonder if there's some misprinting on this um, dot chart, because some of these pigments don't make sense. It's two star light fastness and opaque. Then we have Titanium White, also PW6. Also opaque, but with three stars light fastness instead. Yeah, seems odd that the same pigment would have two different light fast ratings. Then we have Brilliant Pink. It's a mixture of PR209 with PW6. Opaque, two stars light fastness and staining. Then we have Shell Pink. 
which is a mixture of PR9 and PW6. And this is opaque and two stars light fastness. Then we have Jean Brilliant, which is a mixture of PO20, so that's that um, cadmium orange mixed with PY74, which I believe is a Hansa yellow medium, and PW6. That's uh, opaque and two star light fastness. Then we have Jean Brilliant 2, it's a more apricot-y type colour. This is PO20 again, so that's cadmium orange with PW6. And this is also opaque with a two star light fastness. Then we have leaf green, which I really like this colour. It reminds me of like the green gold from Daniel Smith. Um, this is a mixture of PY74, PG7 and PW6. So that's like a Hansa yellow medium, phthalo green and a titanium white. It is transparent with two stars light fastness. Then we have Permanent Green 2. And this is PG7. So again, a really interesting PG7. I don't usually see, I've never seen a PG7 this color before. And this is Two Star Light Fastness and Transparent. Then we have Emerald Green Nova which is another PG7, but this is PG7 mixed with PW6, which is a white. This is semi-opaque and two-star light fastness. Then we have Green Pale, which is also PG7 mixed with PW6, but I'm guessing it's a different ratio of the white to green pigment. <coughs> it's opaque with two-star light fastness. Then we have Horizon Blue, which is a mixture of PB15 colon 4 with PW6. Opaque, two star light fastness and staining. Then we have Blue Grey. This is a mixture of PB15 colon 3, so that's Thalo Blue Green Shade mixed with white. It is opaque with two stars light fastness. Next up we have Lilac, which is a mixture of PR122, which is a quinacridone magenta, PV23, which is like a dioxazine violet, and PW6. It's interesting actually, quinacridone magenta is the only pigment we haven't swatched yet. They have a permanent magenta, but they don't have a PR122 pigment, which is interesting. Next up we have Purple Grey, this is PR122 mixed with PW6. Here's the second colour that has PR122 in the mixture but they don't have a standalone quinacridone magenta colour. This is opaque with one star light fastness. Then we have Bright Violet, this is another fluorescent, it's BV11, so again it's another um, optical brightener type dye. This is transparent with one star light fastness and apparently it is granulating so I guess we shall see. And then finally we have Bright Rose and I have this one as well. This is BR12. I like it instead of Opera. I find it's less garish. It's definitely more blue leaning so it's got more of a violet leaning t colour to it than the Opera and it looks great in mixes. Okay. That's everything swatched. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back and show you the finished results. So everything's dry and we are back now so hopefully you can get a better look. Let me see if we can get everything into the one shot. There we almost. There we go. Get everything on screen at once. All right, I have had to turn the lamp on so hopefully the colours show up nicely. You can see how bright and garish this opera is but the bright rose is a little bit less in your face and I prefer it in that regard. Um, yeah, so it's a really lovely range of colours, don't get me wrong. There are some interesting pigment choices as we mentioned um, as, we went, as I went through. Um, there are some what seems to be redundant options like Viridian and Viridian Hue are the exact same pigment 
um, and the exact same colour when dry. Then you've got things like Crimson Lake, Carmine and Rose Madder, which are all the exact same pigment, just various hues of a non light fast pigment. So that's also an interesting choice. Um, yeah, I definitely think this is a, for the most part, affordable range of uh, professional watercolours. Like I said, some interesting choices with some non light fast pigments. Um, I would suggest that if you are looking to purchase some Shin Han watercolours to maybe look at purchasing them open stock rather than buying the sets. Um, that way you can have control over which pigments you are purchasing and you could do, um, I would suggest, you should do some research into the different pigments and know what you're looking for. Again, this comes back to my whole philosophy that I feel it's important that people at least know a little bit, know the base, have a base understanding of pigments. Um, again, that's personal choice. You don't have to, obviously there are no real rules when it comes to watercolors. You can do what you like. However, if you are looking to create professional work for sale, I personally think it is important to understand the light fastness and the longevity of the paints that you are using. And in order to do that adequately, you really need to know what's in your paints and what those pigments are and what they do and how they work. Um, I would also suggest if you are planning on selling your work, doing some light fastness testing of your own in your own home, in the windows, kind of, um, there are lots of videos on YouTube about it. You can look it up if you don't know how to do it. Um, just to sort of really have an understanding of how your paints react in your climate. I know there are some pigments that people swear fade really quickly, but other people have found they're actually okay. And it could do very, it could very much depend on how strong the sun is where you live, in what part of the world you live in compared to another. So, um, it's always worth doing your own light fastness testing if light fastness is important to you. If you're just painting in sketchbooks or for practice or for yourself, um, or for things like cards and things that aren't expected to be like hanging on a wall in sunlight forever, um, then you don't really need to worry about light fastness and just pick colors that you like. But like I said, I, I personally enjoy learning about pigments and understanding what goes into my colors and my paints. Um, and that's part of the enjoyment of watercolor for me is doing that learning as well. Um, but each to their own, I guess. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, and yeah, let me know. Do you think there are any colors from Shinhan you'd be wanting to try out? My recommendation would be to try out that sap green, the PG8. It's a very unique single pigment green pigment color that you don't find very often. Um, it's a very natural green as well, which I like. Uh, let's see, what other colors would I recommend? I do recommend that phthalo green dark as a nice sort of dark bluish green, which is great for mixing, but also on its own, it's very usable. Um, what other colours do I think are really good and like more unique to the brand that you don't really see? I'd say it's those two are like in terms of the unique colours. Their lavender is also really nice. Indigo, if you're interested in trying out like a true like indigo pigment, their indigo is great but there again be aware that it's not light fast. Um, yeah, I'd say those are probably, in my opinion, the unique colours. They do have their range of like the pastel ones. Leaf green is lovely, but lots of companies have something similar. Brilliant pink and shell pink. I don't know how, I can't remember off the top of my head, but they um, are probably going to be cheaper from Shin Han than from Holbein. Same with the Jean Brilliant and Jean Brilliant too. These four are very popular colours from Holbein. And believe the Shinhan paints are cheaper at least where I am I don't know it depends where in the world you are um otherwise yeah I think some of their other colors they're they're, they're fine there's nothing wrong with them but I think other brands might do them better or have more light fast uh pigments um but yeah so my favorites are the two greens and maybe these like pastel colors as well over here all right Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys again soon. Bye.